Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look back at one of my absolute favorite game series of all time, Ninja Gaiden. Growing up, there wasn't a game that made me want to be a ninja more than Ninja Gaiden. And I don't mean the original Nintendo Entertainment System original, but with the arcade. One of the best things growing up was the arcades. Nowadays, we play for tickets and a chance to get fluffy prizes. Back in the 80s and 90s, the best technology was always in the arcades, and they were a great place to see the best games that might one day be ported home. Ninja Gaiden was one of those games I wanted so badly, but I never got. In the end, the company tried and successfully created a series that, in the end, I absolutely, totally, 100% love. Ninja Gaiden was developed and released by Tecmo in 1988 for the arcades. The first version of the game was similar to famed beat-em-up style of gaming to the likes of Double Dragon and was released a year prior to immense success. The game had two players who were just a red or blue ninja as they traveled the United States in trying to defeat Nostradamus who wants to fulfill his ancestors prophecy in becoming an evil king. This game was brutally hard as it took many of my quarters just to beat one level on the game. I was in awe that the ninja fought in different styles than your average punch or kick. Then the original arcade did receive some ports on the PC and Commodore consoles, but it wasn't until the Atari Lynx brought the arcade home on their portable console. Overall, the game has not aged well. When it comes to gameplay and visuals, its very slow paced gameplay doesn't do the game any help as their visuals, while okay at the time, isn't and doesn't have the same diversity and design of other competitors. Being a ninja was the best part of the game and is what truly drew you in and others like me to play the game for one or two minutes before the computer absolutely crushes you. Seeing how the game would port to your average Sega Master System or Nintendo was probably ruled out based on the technology of the time. Knowing this, Tecmo advanced quickly and created a Ninja Gaiden that was made for the NES that would blow away anything I've seen. Ninja Gaiden for the NES console was developed and released by Tecmo in 1989 and the nameless ninja was now named Ryu Hayabusa. The game itself was a complete departure from its arcade counterpart, but now brought in coherent storyline, cutscenes like never seen before to tell the story, along with stellar gameplay mechanics that made you feel like a badass ninja. Although the game was easy to pick up and play due to its unique and incredible gameplay, the game was still hard to complete and I had yet to do so without a friend's help. With the success of Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Sword of Chaos picked up where they left off in 1990 to become my absolute favorite in the series, period. They added new power-ups, climbing, and even shadows that help you fight along the way. The game, although much easier than the first, was the most complete version with its storyline, character development, fantastic tunes, and frantic action that keeps you glued to the screen.
with the third entry with Ninja Gaiden 3, Ancient Ship of Doom. The popularity of the brand was at its absolute high, coming off an almost perfect game with the second version. In 1991, Ninja Gaiden 3, Ancient Ship of Doom was released. The only issue at this time was due to concerns with difficulty, this version would be the hardest one yet. The gameplay also changed to have Ryu jump a bit more floaty and not as precise as the last two. These two changes really took me out of the game as it was frustrating to try to beat levels instead of enjoying them. Although it was the last of the 8-bit and 16-bit releases, other systems would take a bask in the light with Sega and Atari trying to also cash in on the brand. Sega would bring Ninja Gaiden to the Sega Master System for Europe, Australia, and Brazil in 1992, and is a fine game with more colors on screen but misses the fantastic soundtrack and gameplay reminiscent of the original NES. Although a nice port, the game still needs tighter controls. Sega would also make their own version of Ninja Gaiden for the Mega Drive in 1992 as a side-scroller beat-em-up that would be similar to the arcade but with massively different gameplay mechanics. Although the game was eventually never released, the ROM version was released for the public to play. It is your standard affair beat-em-up but was also much easier than the arcade to just pick up and play action. One port not to be left out was for the PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16. Hudson Soft was able to license the game and did their best to use the power of their system to provide a very good port of the original Ninja Gaiden in 1992. The game matches the NES version in gameplay with a new coat of paint and upgrades to the cutscenes. I felt this was harder in difficulty than the original, but still a very nice port. With the handheld market, they were not left out as long as you owned a Game Boy, Game Gear, and the Atari Lynx. With Sega again taking helm in programming their own version on the Game Gear in 1991, this version is a better playable version in comparison to the Sega Master System and really has nothing to do with that port. The game is smooth and more linear than platforming action. Ninja Gaiden Shadow was released in 1991 by Tecmo for the Game Boy and serves as a prequel to the events on the original NES version of Ninja Gaiden. Although the elements and sound are very very similar, the game does not run as fast as the NES original and is plagued with slowdown. The game is playable but just feels sluggish. The Atari Lynx released two versions of Ninja Gaiden 
with the arcade port in 1990 as we discussed earlier and with Ninja Gaiden 3 Ancient Ship of Doom in 1991. This version is based on the NES original and has issues with its visuals that are nice but hard to identify with its sluggish gameplay and same insane difficulty made this one hard to recommend. The game just ran and looked better on the NES. Of course you can't look at Ninja Gaiden without their port to the Super Nintendo. With the success on Mario All-Stars in 1994, Tecmo took the same route in outing the original trilogy to the NES and ported them over to the Super NES with better music, visuals, and the same addicting gameplay. Excited as I was, the visual and gameplays are nice and crisp and the game looks wonderful. The sound for some reason to me is a bit of a downgrade and I feel that the classic NES does the game justice as it seems more clear and robust. This was the last entry until Ninja Gaiden X on a cell phone in 2004. It doesn't look good and we will pretend it just didn't happen. What about the modern versions of the game made by Team Ninja? Those are games for another time as they are completely on the other side on innovation, especially with the first two entries. Ninja Gaiden has been a huge influence and the gameplay shows even today with releases like Cyber Shadow that plays just like Ninja Gaiden in a new coat of paint. What it proves is that with great gameplay, you have a great game. I'm just glad that the game came with cutscenes, great action and platforming, and unforgettable music that still gets to me today. That's it for me on this special look at Ninja Gaiden before 3D. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and great. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload.